Today on GBA to Z, we're taking a look at Medal of Honor Infiltrator. Developed by Netherrock, Medal of Honor Infiltrator was released November 17, 2003, just one week after Medal of Honor Rising Sun on consoles. It is the only third-person top-down entry in the entire series and the second and final Medal of Honor game released on the GBA, the first being the Fever Dream that is 2002's port of Underground. Infiltrator follows one gritty soldier, Corporal Jake Murphy, behind enemy lines as he fights his way from the deserts of Africa to the heart of Nazi Germany in order to defeat the Axis in some of World War II's most famous battles. Infiltrator makes use of every button that the GBA has to offer. The D-pad walks and aims in eight directions, and as soon as you stop moving, Jake will automatically kneel to try and conceal himself. Being able to shoot in eight directions is nice, but you'd be surprised just how often enemies still fall in between your shots. The B button switches between explosives and firearms. Pressing the A button fires your weapon or uses your explosives. Holding it down has different effects depending on what you have equipped. For a weapon, you'll shoot continuously with a grenade. Holding the A button will throw it further. Grenades will not blow up in your hand if you hold on to them too long, but they will be thrown as far as possible. Additionally, if you walk up close to an enemy and press A, you will instantly kill them with a melee attack. The L button reloads your firearm, but if you're standing next to a mounted machine gun or tank, it will grant you control of it. Pressing it again will return you to your character. Holding the R button allows you to strafe, and the select button pauses the game and pulls up your objectives list. There are no difficulty options here, so you either play it exactly as the developers intended, or you don't play it at all. And I'm going to tell you right now that this game is not easy. It requires awareness, quick thinking, and memorization. In fact, I can see many people giving up before even completing the first level. Infiltrator is made up of five missions, comprised of three levels that consist of action, tactical, and shooting segments. Each mission contains one first-person fixed-view level where you try and shoot every possible moving thing on the screen until the clock runs out. You have infinite ammo and your gun never overheats or needs to be reloaded, so hold down the fire button and never stop. You start off with three lives and are given an additional life after completing each mission. That is one extra life for every three finished levels. There's no continues, but the game does allow you to save after each level, so you can go back and try over and over again. If you have two copies of the game and a link cable, you can play the campaign co-op with another person. Levels have between one and four main objectives that must be accomplished to complete them. Some examples are breaking through enemy lines, securing areas, and destroying various enemy technology like aircraft and a radio tower. With the exception of the first person levels, there are between one and two optional sub-objectives. Examples are destroying munitions or finding secret documents. Whenever a main or sub-objective is accomplished, the game will let you know and also check it off your objectives list. Completing the game and all of its main objectives will unlock Survival Mode, which has you trying to survive an endless enemy onslaught for as long as possible. Completing the game with all sub-objectives will unlock Max GI Mode, which is a version of the campaign that only gives you a single life to complete it, doesn't allow you to save your progress, and doesn't award you any extra lives after completing missions. It also changes your character's colors from green to gray. Picking up a small medical kit will refill 25 points of health, while a small ammo stash gives you an extra magazine's worth of rounds and one of whatever explosive you are carrying. A large refill kit of either will fill its corresponding stock up entirely. If your health or ammo are already full and you walk over that provision, you will not pick it up, which is a handy feature so you don't waste them. There are also health tents and ammo bunkers on your trip that will fully replenish your supplies and can be used as many times as necessary. They also act as checkpoints and will save your progress mid-level, so use them often. Sure, you have a nice selection of weapons, but that doesn't mean you should always be using them. Going in guns blazing is not always the best tactic, however, you will have to shoot your way into and out of a few scenarios. Become familiar with using explosives because sometimes they're the best tool for the job, especially against machine gunners, and cover will become your best friend in large ambushes. Enemies are designed to hear your gunshots and see you if you walk too close to them while in their line of sight. Some levels will sound an alarm and put enemies on alert when any shots are fired. You can use this to your advantage to get their attention and lure them into an ambush, but keep in mind it could also attract more enemies than you are actually able to take out. Sneaking around and instantly killing with the melee attack is incredibly useful throughout the game, and the enemy bodies disappear quickly after being killed so you don't have to worry about hiding them. You can take cover behind boxes, barrels, and other objects to stay out of sight, protect yourself from attacks, or set enemies up to be taken out. The stealth melee kill combination is a great way to keep your ammo supply up during long stretches without refill bunkers, helps you quickly thin the enemy herd during ambushes, and stops extra enemies from coming after you when your cover's blown. Throughout the game, you'll be given the choice between four weapon kits, an M1 Garand and demo charges, a Thompson submachine gun and grenades, a Browning automatic rifle and grenades, or a Colt 1911 and a bazooka. Those are your available options, and they come as a pair. You can't pick them individually. Some firearms shoot further and are more powerful than others, and each has a variable amount of maximum ammunition. Jake does not automatically reload once all loaded rounds have been shot, and no firearm has infinite ammo. So if at any point you run out, you better hope there's a bunker nearby or you're going to have to live in the shadows. 
Blowing things up with the bazooka is one of the coolest things in the game, but in my opinion, the trade-off of a rifle for a pistol is just not worth it, unless whatever you need to blow up is very close by. Infiltrator is a really beautiful game. The pixel art is done incredibly well, from the beach to the jungles to the towns. The explosions look great, and if this down plane right here was taken out of context, it'd be easy to mistake it for something from Metal Slug. Jake's animations are smooth as well, from walking to actually changing what's in your hand when you swap from a firearm to an explosive. I want to specifically point out level 4-1, which has you shooting incoming enemy planes. The enemies don't just pop into view, they come in slowly from a distance and continue getting closer until they finally arrive in plain sight. It's one of the more visually interesting scenes that I've seen in a GBA game lately. There are some standout elements thrown into the mix as you progress. Audio cues will let you know when you've been ambushed, as well as when all of the opposition has been taken out. One level branches into three paths at one point, letting you choose your preferred way to reach the end. Another level purposely plants ammo in an area that will get you ambushed if you attempt to get it. The soundtrack clocks in at 11 tracks and are reworked versions of songs from previous Medal of Honor games, including Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, Frontline, and Underground. These versions are slightly altered to make them synthesize instead of orchestral. I'll show the difference with the Allied Assault main theme here. At points, the soundtrack is your typical military one, but due to the demake style, many parts sound like they could have been from a Super Nintendo RPG. I'll play two of my favorites here. Besides all the logo clutter on the box, I think the main picture pretty much perfectly summarizes this game. It shows a lonely soldier in a combat zone with his M1 Grand looking over the top of some cover. I don't know if there's a better way to convey what this game is all about. Infiltrator does have Medal of Honor Rising Sun GameCube connectivity. You might not know that because the GameCube case doesn't mention anything on the back of it, except for the small Game Boy Advance compatible logo in the top left, and the GBA box is almost just as bad by only stating, connect to Medal of Honor Rising Sun for Nintendo GameCube. Connect for what exactly? Be more instructive with your descriptions, please. Both do at least mention the functionality in their manuals, with the GameCube dedicating an entire page to it, and the GBA including a single line, Nintendo GameCube connectivity, display Nintendo GameCube level maps. So this is how it works. Take your GameCube, Rising Sun game, Link Cable, and GBA, connect them, and turn them on. When you're playing Rising Sun, Infiltrator displays the map of each level and shows where health, ammo, grenades, and enemies are, and more. You can scroll through to see them individually or have everything show up together. It's a pretty useful addition to the game if you're a big fan of Rising Sun, but having to hook up everything and buy a Link Cable and a copy of Infiltrator just to access it seems like it's more effort than it's worth. I do have some issues with this game. First, crouching doesn't always hide you behind cover even though it looks like it should. Second, dropped health and ammo pickups only stick around for a few seconds before disappearing. I'm not saying that they need to stay around forever, but when they drop during an ambush, you really don't have time to take out your immediate threat before running over to grab them. Third, there are times when it's getting hectic when I try to aim and hold a specific angle and I just can't get the character to do it. I try to aim right and it pulls my shot right up or right down. This alone has gotten me killed many times. Lastly, after erasing a save, if you select another to play, it will still default to the erase option instead of continue. You can easily accidentally delete your save if you aren't paying attention. One change I would like deals with the start and select button features. Since you can already pause the game to see your objectives by navigating the start menu, having the select button pause the game to only pull up the objectives list is redundant. I would rather it just toggle the objectives list on the screen while I continue playing the game and moving around. So do I like Medal of Honor Infiltrator? Yes, absolutely. Do I love it? I think I might. I won't lie, I've cursed this game multiple times while working my way through it, but I was able to beat it, and parts of the last level still annoy me to no end. It's like Dark Souls in the fact that after beating it initially, you'll be able to cruise through it in subsequent playthroughs, and once you need more of a challenge, the max GI mode will be waiting for you to attempt. Just keep in mind that this game is challenging, but it's done incredibly well and is overall a great handheld experience.
That being said, if you have an older Game Boy Advance or DS that you're planning to play this on, please make sure that it works perfectly or has been cleaned recently. Every button has to work every time and the triggers are going to be the biggest culprits. Trying to get on a mounted machine gun or into a tank and requiring more than a single button press can easily get you killed. I've used a few handhelds with less than stellar trigger buttons and they just led to a lot of frustration. So if your handheld doesn't work perfectly, put this into your backlog pile and come back to it when you have one that does. Next week we're going to take a look at Shrek Swamp Cart Speedway and if there's a specific game that you'd like to see reviewed on GBA to Z, just leave it down in the comments. First person to tell me what GBA game this audio clip is from? I'll pin your comment to the top and send you something in the mail. And don't edit your comment, otherwise you're disqualified. Stay nerdy, I'm out. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.